Hello all, and welcome to week 43 of the Religious Education Initiative here. This is day one. We are continuing our way through the book of Tobit. So last time we saw Tobit and Sarah both pray to God in moments of deep sadness, asking for whatever mercy they might receive from him. And we saw God send the archangel Raphael to help them and bring them comfort and peace. This week we will see Tobit remember that he isn't quite as destitute as he had been thinking as we set up the plot for the rest of the book. So, chapter 4, verse 1. On that day Tobit remembered the silver he had entrusted to Gabael at Reges of Media. So he said to himself, I requested death for myself. Why do I not call my son Tobias to make this known to him before I die? So he summoned him and said, My son, if I die, bury me, but do not disregard your mother. Honor her all the days of your life. Do what is pleasing to her, but do not grieve her. Remember, my son, that she experienced many dangers for you while you were in the womb. When she dies, bury her beside me in the same grave. My son, remember the Lord our God all your days, and do not desire to sin or to disobey his commandment. Do righteousness all the days of your life, and do not walk in the ways of wrongdoing. For if you walk in the truth, you will be successful in your works. Do almsgiving from your possessions to all who do righteousness. When you do almsgiving, do not let your eye be envious. Do not turn your face away from any poor man, so that the face of God will not be turned away from you. Do almsgiving based on the quantity of your possessions. If you possess only a few, do not be afraid to give according to the little that you have. You are storing up a good treasure for yourself in the day of necessity. For almsgiving delivers us from death and prevents us from entering into the darkness. Indeed, almsgiving is a good gift for all who do it before the Most High. My son, guard yourself from all fornication, and above all, take a wife from among the seed of your fathers. Do not take a foreign woman who is not from the tribe of your father, for we are sons of the prophets. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are our fathers from of old. Remember, my son, that all these took wives from among their brothers and were blessed in their children. Their seed will inherit the land. So now, my son, love your brothers, and do not be arrogant in your heart against your brothers, the sons and daughters of your people. Take a wife for yourself from them, for arrogance brings destruction and great disorder, and in such worthlessness there is loss and great defect. For worthlessness is the mother of famine. Do not keep overnight the wages of any man who works for you, but pay him immediately. If you serve God, he will pay you. Give heed to yourself, my son, in all your works, and be disciplined in all your conduct. What you yourself hate, do not do to anyone. Do not drink wine unto a state of drunkenness, and do not let drunkenness become your traveling companion. From your bread give to him who is hungry, and from your clothing give to the naked. If you have more than you need, do almsgiving, and do not let your eye envy the almsgiving when you do it. Spread out your bread on the grave of the righteous, who do not give it to sinners. Seek counsel from every sensible man, and do not treat any useful advice with contempt. At every opportunity, bless the Lord God, but more than this, ask that your ways may become straight, and that all your paths and purpose may prosper. For not every nation has understanding, but the Lord himself gives all that is good, and as he desires, he humbles whomever he will. Now, my son, let none of my commandments be removed from your heart. Now let me point out to you the ten talents of silver I entrusted to Gabael, the son of Gabrias, in Regis of Media. Do not fear, my son, that we have become poor, for you are very rich if you fear God. Stay away from every sin and do what is pleasing before him. So I think there are a few things that we can notice from this. Uh, first and foremost, this is the best counsel that this righteous man can give to his son, thinking it may be the last time he talks to him. And we should notice, too, that he doesn't tell him about the money until the very end. So what is most important to him, what is most important that he pass on, is not the wealth, but the way of life, the piety, 
the faithfulness that he's tried to teach him all his life. Once he's conveyed that this is what's most important, that this is what will keep him rich, fearing God will keep him rich, then he also tells him, but there's money for you, too. I didn't lose everything. If you go to media, you'll find your birthright. You'll find your inheritance. Now, how Tobit defines righteousness should be very interesting to us because he begins he begins with almsgiving. Well, no, I should say he begins with commanding him to honor his mother. And that clear statement about the reason to honor a mother because she suffered and risked so much for a child even while he was in her womb. Uh, th this runs very deep, and it's not really a thing that is common in human society. We like to think that it is, honoring the mother, valuing and respecting the one who bore us. But really, this is an this is a virtue of the people of the covenant. This is a virtue of the Jewish people and of Christian people afterwards because we think that this is normal, honoring motherhood to this extent because, because, it's, uh, because of the effects of the Christian gospel on our society over 2,000 years. It's not automatic. It's far too easy to not respect the elderly. Anyway, he commands him to be righteous, uh, to keep the law, and especially, especially he commands him to do two things. Always to be generous to those who are in need. Always to do alms, even when he's poor, still to give from his poverty to those who are in need. Maybe he can't give as much, but still to give what he can. This is, for Tobit, really the one righteousness, the one faithful act that is left to him beyond honoring his mother, caring for her, caring for the poor, being generous. This is what Tobit's able to do. He can't go to the temple anymore. He can't offer sacrifices anymore. He can't tithe to the temple anymore, but he can care for the poor, and he wants to make sure his son continues to do this. The other thing he wants him to do, and we see what he's doing is establishing the boundaries of a good life. He wants him to be very careful who he marries. Because if he marries a woman who is not faithful to God, he will be dragged away from this faithful way of life into something else entirely. Tobit wants to make sure he does not forsake the covenant of God, and that means he needs to choose a spouse who will not forsake the covenant of God. We have to be clear, too, this is not about ethnicity. This is not about the nation or the blood. This is about the faith, about the faithfulness to God. And Tobit emphasizes it very strongly. We can't overemphasize how important this is. If we want to stay faithful, we must not marry someone who is not faithful. And then he tells him where the money is. And cares for him as best as he can. But first, as we see, as we said, he makes sure that he understands what is most important to his father. Not wealth, not success, not even leaving something behind for the next generation. Even this isn't Tobit's first priority. The first priority is passing on to his son the essential reality of faith, of covenant, of of the heritage of the Lord. So, this is what we see. May God grant that we may do the same for our children. That's it for day one. I'll see you all for day two. God bless you.